Hi, Dr. Scott Jensen here with Dr. Jackie Conley, my daughter. It's time for Dr. Doctor. Today's conversation topic is going to be a challenging one. It has to do with trusting patients. As physicians, literally from the first week of medical school, you're sort of taught that you're in charge. You know best. You've got the MD behind your name. Sometimes that goes to our heads and we think that if we're not thinking it, it isn't real. And if we are thinking it, it must be science. And I don't think either of those assumptions are the correct ones because I have certainly seen patients do good work on the internet where they'll have some symptoms, they'll look it up and they'll come in and say, well, could this be my gallbladder? And we talked about it and I said, it sure could be. It's frustrating for patients and it's frustrating for many doctors that sometimes patients' well-founded process of thinking is sort of dismissed. It's shut up and take my prescription. Here's the pills, go start. Sure. What are your thoughts on that, Dr. Conley? There's a fine line, right? The Dr. Google can be super, super helpful, but also can kind of have the flip side of ramping people up and causing more anxiety than really is indicated for whatever the symptom is, but that's a conversation that you know you have with your doctor and you figure it out. One of the biggest things that I have heard from patients is they'll come to me and say, I, you know, I was put on this medication and I'm getting this side effect specifically. I'll say, well, it's not a common one. You know, It's not common to hear about that particular side effect with this medication, but if you started the med and then that started and you think there's a correlation, then absolutely, I believe you, I trust you, and, and let's get rid of the med. Let's, let's get rid of it and see if it goes away. There have been some years over the last decade where the United States citizens, which represents about 4.5% of the world's population, there have been situations where we literally get close to taking 30, 40, 50% of the world's prescription drugs. We clearly take, I think, 95% plus of the Oxycontin made in the world. The point I'm trying to make is that we are a pill-driven society. And if you actually look at the data, it isn't as if the United States wins all the contests in terms of metrics, in terms of average lifespan, even in terms of neonatal mortality. So I think one of the things we need to do is we need to step back and say, I'm not trying to disrespect the doctor or his medical degree or her medical degree, but I want to know if I'm going to start this pill, what time frame? should I give it to determine whether or not it's effective? I had a patient in the other day, and he pees a lot at night, and he wanted to try some Flomax. I said, hey, cool, I think it's a reasonable effort. I said, but listen, if you haven't gotten relief in two to four weeks, it's very likely that it may not give you relief. Now, there's other medicines where you have to give it two, three months. Right. But I think patients should be pushing doctors more to say, okay, how will we know whether that this drug is doing what we're hoping for? Sort of like we're trying to establish what is the end point, and if the end point is lowered blood pressure, lowered cholesterol, I don't have to pee at night as much as I was, if that's the end point, let's identify it, and let's identify the time frame in which we should see it. Because if we're not seeing it, I'll tell you what doctors do. We just keep carrying that medicine forward and forward. You'll find yourself on a medicine for five years that hasn't done a darn thing for you. And it's because our system is driven around pills or surgeries. And honestly, what we're talking about with pills, you could actually say same thing with surgeries. You could yeah. say, what's the end point we're trying to get? What's the likelihood we're gonna get it? Someone came in the other day and said that he got that shark cartilage injected into his knee, and he said it was terrific. And I thought, well, great. And he was just excited about it. I didn't want to tell him that if you actually look at the data, the number of people that need to be treated with shark cartilage to get a really good response is probably six people need to be injected in order for one person to get the real response that they're hoping for. That's what some of the data has shown. Do you have any thoughts on that? He got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> he got lucky. I, I agree. I mean, if you look at some of the number needed to treat information on statin drugs, on lowering blood pressure, it is interesting that it's it's not necessarily 100% of people that were helping prevent death or mortality. I, I, I heard someone say the other day, they said, Western medicine will keep you from dying, but it won't help you live. And I thought, wow. Western medicine will keep you from 
dying, but it won't let you live. Won't help you live. Won't help you live. And I'm, I'm not even sure if we keep people from dying. Well, true. But I thought that was interesting. I thought that was really interesting, and it made me take a step back and be like, oh, that's that's true. You know, there's not a lot that we do in medicine where people, you know, are like, I'm living my best life. Yeah. I don't think we're having that conversation a lot. So I, I, you know, I sat with that for a little bit, and I thought, well, okay, how how can I help my patients live? I think that's a great note to end on, Jackie, and I'm very proud of you for being so attentive to how can physicians, providers, truly help their patients live their best life. I think sometimes we get trapped into our own little algorithms and the way we look at the world. And, and quite frankly, physicians, if we're not prescribing a pill or doing a procedure, sometimes we feel like we're not really contributing. What do we do? Yeah, and it's not as if our prices are low. I mean, we get we get pretty high dollars for our procedures and our services. So I guess the message is, uh, patients, you really are up to the task of being your own best champion, and the stakes are high, so don't be shy. Yep.